All right, guys, welcome to Project Get Speed. Now, today's video, I am going to be installing a sound system on the little hatchback. Finally, I'll have a decent sound system. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to Project Kid Speed. If you don't know, I'm Jay, and I mostly just work on upgrading my little hatchback here. And on today's video, we're going to go ahead and install all this stuff into the little hatchback. I don't think I'll be able to do all of this just because it'd be one really long video. So I'm going to go ahead and split it up into parts. I think I'm going to go ahead and just install the speakers for now, and um, I'll save the rest for part two. Now, all this stuff was provided by, but not sponsored, by Crutchfield, um, and it is just basically an audio website that helps you find whatever you might need in terms of car stuff. Now, I didn't buy all of this stuff there. I didn't buy this one there just because the ones they offered were a little bit more expensive and had extra stuff that I didn't need. For someone like me who knows nothing about audio equipment, um, it was really helpful and really useful tool to get all this stuff together, and I think I may have gotten all the stuff that I need, but uh -oh, we'll see if uh, break some stuff along the way because I'm not an expert and this is my first time doing anything like this. Now, as I said before, I am by no means an expert. So if you're looking for expert advice on how to properly install all this stuff, this is probably not the video for you. And it is only just now that I realized the slot is on the other side. Oh boy. But if you're looking for an example on how someone with no experience can in install this, then let's go ahead and get started. Now, in a previous video, I actually installed a double din radio, which is the Boss BE7ACP in my JDM Center console. I also managed to install a whole new uh, speaker wire harness and an adapter in a different video because it seemed the previous owner decided to cut some of the stock wiring harness, either too short or just completely out on some sides. So I decided to just replace my whole wiring setup with some oxygen free copper wire which uh here is supposed to be better for audio quality even though i know nothing about the car audio world and i am no expert in this i have been doing some research so that i can try and keep mistakes down to a minimum now i bought kickers ds series of coaxial speakers for both the front and the back now this little hatchback typically takes five and a quarter speakers all the way around but the six and a half speakers also fit in the front with a little bit of modification, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing because that's what I bought. I bought the six and a half for the front and the five and a quarter for the rear. Now, this particular hatchback has the rare JDM rear speaker housing, or at least partial at least, and can actually accommodate an extra set of five and a quarter speakers in the rear. So I'll, I could technically install four five and a quarter speakers in the rear and two six and a half in the front. But I'm only going to be installing one of the five and a quarters in the rear on each side for now. Now, after I installed the brand new oxygen free copper wiring, I didn't exactly reinstall the speakers the right way. Basically, I, I had no speaker clips to install in the speaker wires and I didn't want to splice the old mismatched terminals to the brand new ones. So I basically just wrapped it around the speaker um, terminals and just shoved them back in there and called it a day. Now, I know, I know this is not what you're supposed to do. And obviously, you know, I didn't intend to leave them that way, but I was lazy and I didn't care. So these are the six and a half. Currently, I have six and a half in the front. And let me tell you, they are not held on there properly. So we'll see if I'll even be able to install this cover because I, I'm not too sure if it'll fit the right way. Uh, hopefully it will. They actually come with the speaker wire terminals that I didn't have. Now, I did actually buy a set of wire crimpers and a little box full of terminals that I could use from Amazon. Um, but since Kicker provided their own, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with those. And I just bought this for nothing now. Great. I've got the five and a quarter and the six and a half. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give you guys the uh, information about frequency, sensitivity, power, and impedance, all just right there for you guys to access. 
Now, both the six and a half and the one and a quarter here have about the same values. There is a 10 watt RMS difference in both of them. I think this one's at 50 and these are at 60. So hopefully there'll be enough to um, actually sound decent and not blow up my double din because I don't know what the RMS rating for that one is. I don't know why Boss decided not to provide that information and instead just give you the peak. Now that I have the power rating, the sensitivity and frequency and impedance all basically just factored into my setup, I think it's time to install these. Let's see if you guys can see the brand here. So these are 300 watt peak. Whoa, these are more than the kickers. I guess we're about to find out whether or not these are better quality because these are rated for 300 peak power and these are only rated at uh, 200 i think oh well let's find out okay so after installing the wire terminals for the speakers and oh check it out so this is a little baffle that's supposed to come with that's why i said it's a partial rear thing and unfortunately this piece didn't actually quite fit Essentially, the speakers themselves have little slots so you can kind of maneuver them just in case the fitting isn't right. However, this piece doesn't have such slot. It has pretty much defined holes, whereas these have like slots so you can slide them back and forth. And based on the setting, um, on the measurements on mine, these didn't fit. Also, since I have this other hole here, I'm guessing they don't know that I can also fit six and a half spec here instead of five and a quarter. So I really should have thought this through and maybe just purchased these and then, you know, figured out if they fit. Cause they do, I mean, they fit in the housing. So I could screw them on by just getting self-tapping screws in there, which I mean, they provide honestly, but I use my um, stock OEM uh, screws because they fit better. This is, this is seriously something to consider for the future might install six and a halves all the way around. Who knows? Let me go ahead and just take this out because now you can install these in the front. And it is only just now that I realized the slot is on the other side. Oh boy. Do I switch them or leave them? Mm. Uh, I'll just switch them, fuck it. God damn it, why am I so fucking lazy? Oh, okay. So I have finally managed to fix my mistake in case you guys needed proof that I really am not an expert and don't know what I'm doing. Um, so now they align with the slot. This one has a baffle, the other one doesn't. And I cleaned it up and I replaced some of the little foam cushion so that it doesn't rattle. And now I can move on to the front. Now, these are the stock baffles for a 92 to 95 Civic that I picked up at the junkyard. And I thought that they weren't going to fit, but it looks like they actually fit quite perfectly. You guys can see the fitting inside there. It has just enough clearance to fit. I was actually gonna modify these so that I can cut the back end out and just have the front plate as an adapter, but now I don't have to. Look at that. Well, I hope this doesn't alter the sound because currently I just have this speaker installed just like that. And it kind of rattles a little bit and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Seeing as how I have the stock ones, I'm gonna go ahead and go with those over modifying them. But I also picked up these adapters from Amazon. And as you can see, they have very similar um, screws to mount in place. So they'll fit just as well in case, you know, you have bigger speakers or maybe just deeper ones. Um, but essentially, I'm just gonna set these aside and install the stock ones to see how they sound. And then I'll switch them off to see if the adapter by itself makes a difference because this back covering might muffle the sound and I, I really don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it both ways. A little bit of an issue. So the stock housing fits the speaker perfectly well. As you guys can see here, I've already attached the wire. However, it does not fit the housing because there's just no way for this piece to you guys can see it won't it won't screw onto here it's just a little too big and the screws don't line up however for the aftermarket housing everything fits perfectly even the outside shield to protect the speaker and however you don't have any rear protection and uh, so i'm going to show you guys in a minute that that is pretty important stuff because my 
uh, molding sometimes isn't all that great and depending on whether it rains or whether I wash it in a weird way sometimes the water just goes down there and could corrode the terminals. It's gonna be time for a decision. Do I want to protect the speaker from the rear and maybe it doesn't sound so great or do I want it to all fit in place with no protection in the rear but it sounds better. So well I think this is gonna, this one's gonna sound better but I won't know until I plug them in so I'm gonna just go ahead and install them as is now and whichever one sounds better I'm gonna go with. But if they sound the same I'm gonna go with the OEM one just because it has that rear protection. Speakers have now been installed and that side has the stock baffle with just the speaker and this one has the Amazon adapter ba um, baffle with no rear housing. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. However, I'm gonna have to switch over to the GoPro so the sound quality might be a little bit different. However, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my, my just honest opinion because I think the stock speakers that I had are actually more powerful and they seem to be a little bigger and I'll show you guys um, in a minute. And we're gonna go ahead and just test out our current setup. Hold on, let me just shut this door. Now these are 10 year old speakers from a flea market and they do not sound all that great. No bass and starting to distort back there. 38 still sounds pretty good. Still at 50, back at the start of the song with the bass. It's the champagne point. Oh, that sound is knocking right there. That one's okay. That's uh, I'll figure out how to edit this later, but that's good enough for now. Let me just shut this off. All right, GoPro on. Song is about to start. It seems to be as loud, just a little clear. Okay, so basically, the speakers sound a little bit louder. However, that's not the issue here that I want to get. Um, Across it. There's hardly any um, distortion once you get to the the peak, so that's that's pretty great. And uh, like I said, I don't need an obnoxiously loud system. So let's see how let's see what the difference is between the left and the right here. It sounds a little quiet. Oh, that's with the baffle. That's that's weird. That sounds louder. And I'm farther away. This one's closer. Okay, so I'm definitely I'm definitely putting the baffles on. All right. Good to know. So these are my old speakers and uh, as you can see, they are rated for a higher power than the kicker ones. Yet the kicker ones are actually better. Even though they might be as loud these kickers don't, don't basically just eliminate the distortion at higher volumes. Yeah, these adapters, they work well to uh, install, I guess if your speakers are higher than the stock baffle, they work well for stuff like this. However, I did notice that they're a little bit quieter. So um, I guess the baffles really help to distribute the sound more towards the front. And uh, I, tr I really tried to get these to fit in, in place. None of them would actually fit in either the rear or the front. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and just package all of this up into the kicker boxing and maybe just save them for a rainy day in case something happens. So the speakers have been installed and I gotta say, um, I am liking them. They are not super loud, but they do basically eliminate the distortion. I noticed that when I cranked up the volume on the previously installed speakers, I would get some distortion around 38 with it being a little bit more noticeable around 48 and or 45 and up i think it only goes up to 50 but on these i basically like i i don't hear any distortion all in all like overall improvement in the quality of the sound which i'm guessing has to do with the sensitivity most likely because the power rating for the old speakers says it's more but they're probably not as sensitive so they uh, don't really use that power well and basically just distort the sound coming out but you know I mean I'm not an expert I'm just I'm guessing that's probably what it is or maybe it's just crappy quality either way the kicker speakers installed very pleased with these all right and now I have to go ahead and install the amplifier and the wiring kit for the amplifier and then the sub 
hopefully I don't mess this part up because this is actually the tough part. Th that was easy. It was just a little time consuming just because of the recording and uh, I messed up the rear end, the rear speakers. But unfortunately, I think that's gonna have to wait for our next video. So stay tuned for the next video, guys. Until then, take care and good speed.